Welcome everyone to this Maundy Thursday worship here on April the 9th, 2020 in the time of the global pandemic. And so we welcome you from here in our home on Legion Drive in Covington, Georgia, and we're glad you're here from your homes and your various places. We begin this evening as the way the agape meal always ends. For those of you who have had a meal and for those of you who have not, we begin with the reading of the 17th chapter of the book of John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in, your, in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Well, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let me have you. Let us pray. O God of the crucified and risen one, from whom no trial or trouble can separate us, you feed us with your word and soothe us with your spirit, closer to us than breath itself. Make us glad this night for the life of your servant Jesus. Make us servants of all for his sake, who for our sake gave his life for the salvation of all. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, 
mercifully grant that when the day comes when we are able to receive it once more, we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, this is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, there are two things that we traditionally remember on Monday, Thursday, that we that we remember, that we celebrate, that we in some in some ways reenact. Those, of course, are the what we call the institution of the Eucharist and and the foot washing, right? Jesus, Jesus getting up from the table and washing the disciples' feet. The, the Eucharist, of course, is, is Jesus' gift to the disciples there in that room and his, and his gift through them to the later church. We, I used the word reenact before, and we, we sometimes get into that mode, but of course, we're not, we're not trying to reenact exactly what the disciples did, neither with our, our agape meal or anything else we do on this night or other nights. The, the Eucharist developed gradually over decades after Jesus had ascended and and yet, and yet this night still nonetheless reminds us, reminds us of that, of that moment there in the, in the upper room where he broke the bread and, and blessed it and, and passed the cup and blessed it and said, this is my body, this is my blood, right? And then there's the foot washing, of course, that, that act of service and, and servanthood that, that clearly was a, a shock. Peter, Peter gives us uh, a taste of what it must have been, what a shock it must have been to all of the disciples to have their, their prophet, their, their leader, their rabbi, their, their Lord to get up and, and begin to wash their feet. But I want you to notice both in what we've already heard and what we will hear in just a few minutes and what we will do, the adaptations that, that we've made for what I, I, we're coming to call, what some of us are coming to call Corona tide, right? This, this strange time of pandemic in which, in which we're, we're having to upend our lives in so many ways in order to, to stay safe from, to try and stay safe from the virus and to, to support our communities and support our, our doctors and nurses and, and hospitals and to keep as many people as safe as possible. We've adapted with help these things that we're remembering, these things that we're praying, these things that we're doing tonight. First, first the Eucharist, of course, and maybe that's the, the, glaring, the glaring absence tonight. You won't be surprised if you haven't, if you haven't walked through the rest of the bulletin that, that there's no Eucharist at the end, as there normally would be on, on Maundy Thursday. And if you were listening carefully in the, the collect of the day, I found one that had been nicely modified. Mercifully grant, we prayed, mercifully grant that when the day comes, when we are able to receive it once more, receive the Eucharist once more, we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It really is a glaring absence, isn't it? Not, not just tonight, of course, but on on Sundays and those, on those, those other times where we gather specifically to, to walk up to the rail, to make those physical movements, right? To walk up, to stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters, our bodies close together, to, to hold out our hands, to, to feel the bread placed in our hand, to feel the, our lips on the cup and the taste of the wine, crossing ourselves, the, the words spoken, as the bread and the wine are handed out, we, we miss that. We miss that. It tells us how important sacraments, the material stuff of the world, taking this material stuff of bread and wine and, and turning it into a sign, how important that is. Listen to what the Collect says, though. The, in these holy mysteries, we are given a pledge of eternal life, right? A pledge of eternal life. That is, not just life after death, but, but what we might also call the life of the ages, abundant life. Life as God meant it to be. That is what we receive when we receive the Eucharist, when we receive Holy Communion. We're receiving that pledge, that sign 
of life as it was meant to be. And boy, do we feel that absence right now of life as it was meant to be. My question for you this evening is will we see the Eucharist differently when it finally returns? When we finally return to be together physically in that same space to kneel and to put our hands out? Will we see the Eucharist, Eucharist differently? Will we see how it's for the life of the world? It's for the life of the ages. It's for all. It's the thing that brings us together in a mystery as one people in the way that the whole world was meant to be together in the beginning. And then there's the foot washing. What, what tonight we've translated into, into hand washing, right? And what's, and what's that about? Well, I'm not trying to, I'm not tr trying to create a new, a new Sunday sacrament. Let's be clear about that. I think I've told you the story before of, of Barbara Brown Taylor preaching 20 years ago and, and saying, aren't we so glad that the foot washing didn't become the major sacrament after baptism that we would observe every single Sunday? No, instead we have a simple meal. Foot washing may be problematic or difficult on a weekly basis to watch each, wash each other's feet, right? No, what we have today and what we will pray for speaks right into the situation that we find ourselves in. It speaks right into the situation of the pandemic. We cleanse our hands, we will pray. We cleanse our hands as we were cleansed in the waters of new birth, the waters of baptism. We do this not because we are afraid, but because we were commanded to love. To cleanse our hands and gather in spirit is how we best love the vulnerable, whom Jesus loved. May we be instruments of love, we will pray. Washing our hands tonight reminds us of, of not only hand washing, but all these measures we're taking to, to try to keep ourselves and our communities our friends and neighbors and, and, and plenty of people that we will never meet, never know, to try to keep everyone safe. Instruments of love will be asked when we pray, that we be, be, be made instruments of love, that we be made servants of God's peace, as, as we just heard in the opening here. Jesus asks us to see the world differently, Right? He asked us all the way to the cross to see the world differently. As we seek to be instruments of God's love. Not just to see friends and family differently, but neighbors, our communities, our betrayers. To see our politics, our economics differently. To see differently those that we tend to overlook or ignore. Jesus asked us to see the world differently. And so tonight, after, after this great crescendo of, of hand-washing, of, of quarantining, of, of social distancing, of, of sheltering in place, of masks, of, of essential services and non-essential businesses, of, of all these things that we're trying to do to keep each other safe, Things that boil down to loving service. Things that boil down to, to servanthood. To putting others before ourselves. Right? My question for us tonight is, as with the Eucharist, will we see others differently? After this is all behind us, will we see the world with new eyes? Amen.
My friends, the Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this the world shall know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. We wash now, my friends, as we were washed in baptism. We cleanse our hands as we were cleansed in the waters of new birth. We do this not because we are afraid, but because we were commanded to love. To cleanse our hands and gather in spirit is how we best love the vulnerable, whom Jesus loved. May we be instruments of love. May the sacrifices we make in this time and beyond be for the good of our human family, near and far. If you are prepared at home, I now invite you to wash your hands. United with Christians around the globe on this Maundy Thursday, my brothers and sisters, let us pray for the church, the whole earth, our troubled world, and all in need, responding to each petition with the words, your mercy is great. Blessed are you, holy God, for the church. Gather all the baptized around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people, even when we cannot assemble for worship. Grant Bishop Wright and all our clergy and church staff faithfulness and creativity for their ministry in this time, and accompany those preparing for baptism. Hear us, holy God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for this good earth and for the flowering of springtime. Save dry lands from destructive droughts 
protect the waters from pollution, allow in this time the planting of fields for food, make us into caregivers of your plants and animals. Hear us, bountiful God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, sovereign God, for our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace and concord. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face the coronavirus pandemic. Lead our elected officials to champion the cause of the needy. Hear us, sovereign God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, faithful God, for you accompany suffering humanity with love. Abide wherever the coronavirus has struck. Visit all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. Support physicians, nurses, and home health aides, medical researchers, state and federal civil servants, and the World Health Organization. Hear us, faithful God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, gracious God, for you care for the needy. We beg you to feed the hungry, protect the refugee, embrace the distressed, house the homeless, nurse the sick, and comfort the dying. Especially we pray for all those we name before you now. Ruben, Louise, Marie, Kim, Addie, Don, hear us, gracious Lord. Your mercy is great. And blessed are you, loving God, that your Son knelt before us, your unworthy servants. Preserve our lives, comfort our anxiety, and receive now the petitions of our hearts. Hear us, loving God. Your mercy is great. Blessed are you, eternal God, for all who have died in the faith, especially the martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer, whom we commemorate today, and those whom we name before you here. Hmm. Gerald Paul. Yeah. John. Edna Pagan. All those who have died in our state. In our county. The doctors who have died, the priests, the nurses. At the end, bring us with them into your everlasting glory. Hear us. Or, Hear us, Lord, eternal God. Mercy is great. Receive, merciful God, our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ the host of our meal of life, who died and rose that we might live with you now and forever. Amen. And now in the words our Lord has taught us, we are bold to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory. ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, we bring here with me. Oh.